author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park with Julie Kibler, author of Calling Me Home. Julie, welcome to Author. Thank you. Thank you for having me. When did your writing journey begin for you? Um, I started writing seriously, as people say, um, in about 2005. Oh, so it's pretty new. Yes. Well, and I have a, I have two or three manuscripts under the bed that won't ever see the light of day. I did uh, write a full novel that I queried, um, sent to agents, sent you know query letters to agents, and um, did not have any success with that. And pretty quickly put that away because I felt um, that this story was starting to you know worm its way into my conscience, and um, really I felt like it was going to be the one that if I wrote it that I would probably potentially have a pretty good chance of selling it so what did it so what was it that made that about it that said you that said Julie in this book as opposed to the other one I, I wasn't seeing a lot of other stories out there that were similarly written um, it felt it felt more unique to me which gave me a hint that it was what I needed to be writing um, I had taken a class, an online class, uh, with Barbara Samuel, who also writes as Barbara O'Neill. She teaches or taught voice classes and would have us write monologues and, you know, short pieces where we explored the things that were really important to us. And I wrote a monologue for the main character, which happened to be the, the book is inspired by, by my grandmother. And I wrote a monologue from her point of view exploring this, um, the issue that I talk about in the book, which is an interracial relationship. And um, so I, I think I felt like I had a lot more vested in the subject, in the topic, in the emotions, and the, um, the, the soapboxes, so to speak, yeah. and um, learned, I think I really learned that those are what you need to be writing about. The things that really fire you up, the things that you can't stop thinking about, the things that you, they're your kind of your hot buttons. And um, those were definitely present in the story. Um, racism, marginalization, single moms. But it's a tricky issue always, you know, writing about race. Mm -hmm. um, did you have to give yourself permission to do it? I did, and that took a little while. Um, feel that you had a right to that you yes I especially because one of my point of view characters is an african-american woman yeah. and I did struggle with that during the writing well before the pre-writing during the writing after selling the book really all the way almost up to publication that's been a little bit of a worry you know that that people might think well you know why would she felt like she has the right to write from a different race point of view. Um, character is based, well, the character is not based on, I need to back up, the character is inspired by a friend. Um, I've, I've had an African-American hairdresser for about 15 years, and she has a, just a great sense of humor, um, single mom, and so her character was actually fairly easy for me to write. It was almost easier for me to write than the teenage girl simply because I know this person so well and she knows that the book is inspired partially by her character to, or by her, her person. Um, but uh, I did have a friend basically when I expressed my worry, my nervousness about writing from such a different point of view, um, she, and it was the same, Barbara Samuel, my, my kind of mentor, um, she just basically said that she has always said when people have questioned what she has written, that you know, I wrote the story I was giving with as much integrity as I could, yeah. and that's the answer that you give, and that's the answer you know that 
people can't argue with. What did you learn writing Calling Me Home, if you can think of this? What did you really learn that you took with you to your next project? Well, I've been learning that no book is written the same way, so that's a tricky question because I, the manuscript before this one, I did kind of by the seat of my pants. I, I always kind of knew where the next chapter was going, but not much beyond that. I knew, you know, the beginning and the end, and then between, I didn't know a whole lot. Whereas, did you calling me that? home, I did an outline, oh. and uh, I kind of. It's, it's kind of interesting. It, it almost became a road map, which is kind of an irony because the story's a road trip. And I did find that I had detours. You know, I didn't necessarily <laughs> yeah. follow the map. And then, so as I've worked on the new book, I, I'm finding that it is not going as simply as far as outlining and characterization. It's wanting to be more organic and Well, that's less, rare. That yeah. is rare to have a to outline scary. one day and not, because mm -hmm. almost always people do it one way or the other. Yeah, I've gone really, I've moved around a lot and oh. I just assumed, okay, the outline worked, so I'm going to do that. Right. But I'm finding that I'm needing to know more about the story and about where it's going mentally and emotionally before I'm able to just sit down and write an outline. I wrote an outline for the story in a month. And, for this one? Mm -hmm, wow. And then started writing, wrote for about three months, took a little break, wrote for about another three months, and that was my first draft. And it was, it felt very, um, it came pretty easily, which I think can be a little bit of false confidence building. So, <laughs> Um, I, I False confidence for finishing it or just for future books? The next books? one, yeah, yeah, because I've, I've, heard, I've heard that the second book, or the second book the for writers, on now, is man. a little bit harder, and I definitely, I think you, as you go through the process of waiting for your novel to be published, you're constantly seeing other books and having little panics of... Is it too much like yours, you mean? Like, oh no, it's exactly the same <laughs> book that I just wrote and is about to be published <sighs> and nobody's going to read mine, and so... I think when you are then attempting to come up with your next story idea, if you're not already, you know, if it's not already written, you second guess a lot more and because you want to get it right the first time. All right, Julie, I've got one more question for you. I'd like you to answer this or finish this sentence for me. Mm -hmm. uh, if writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? That nothing ever, ever stays the same. Think that things are always changing and that you have to go with it and just find your place in that river and keep swimming. <laughs>